Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, October the 11th. I want to introduce you to uh, Becca Pamperl. Welcome, Becca. Welcome. Actually, yeah. Becca was with us a year ago, yes. one year ago, yes. uh, talking about the Out of the Darkness Walk. And yes. you came in today, I said, my goodness, a year has gone by. Yes, a year has gone by. The Out of the Darkness Walk, why don't you tell our listeners and viewers what that is? It is uh, Sunday, October 15th at Stevens Lake Park. But what is the purpose of the The out purpose of it is for loved ones who have lost someone to, su to suicide to be able to go and celebrate their loved one's life. It's also for us to reach out in the community and tell people about suicide and educate people more about it. To raise awareness yes. of suicide. Yes. Now, if I remember correctly, it was your brother, yes. correct? Yep. You yep. lost your brother to yes. suicide. Yes, I did. And this was a, 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 a total shock and surprise to you. It was. It was a total shock and surprise. And I've learned a lot now, and that's why I'm doing this. That's why I volunteer my time and do this. Do you feel that with uh, this walk, Out of the Darkness walk, bringing people together, information can be shared that could end up saving somebody's life? Of course, of course, yes. There's lots of information to be shared. And, um, you know, we, we talk about m many things, including warning signs and whatnot, or um, how to get someone help. If you feel like you have someone else who might be suicidal, how to get them help. Um, there is the talk line, the 1-800-273-TALK. Okay, 1-800-273-TALK. Yes. Now, is this a helpline for someone who is contemplating suicide? This is or someone who knows or thinks that someone may be contemplating suicide? It is for both. Um, both can get the help there. They can get the local resources to be able to help somebody out or to be able to get their own self some help. You mentioned warning signs. Are there any clear-cut warning signs? I, I would like to say that there are there are some that are, um, you know, sometimes apparent, uh, you know, sometimes like a loved one will tell their loved ones they love them. Um, they will uh, have different um, activities that they um, participate in. Uh, they, um, you know, withdraw from crowds. Uh, they tell them that they're proud of them. There are some warnings. Almost signs. as if they're trying to say goodbye. Bye. Right. Almost as if they're trying to say goodbye, but not actually coming right out and right. doing it. Right. Right. Correct. Okay. The uh, Walk to Fight Suicide is on Sunday, October the 15th. Yes. At what time? At noon is when registration opens, and then the walk ceremony will begin at 2 p.m. We have uh, some food trucks there. We will have a lot of things for people that have lost ones to suicide, a memorial wall, bead ceremony. Um, we also have some fun things for children. We have an inflatable obstacle course. Okay. So we have some fun things. Uh, you know, the whole family can come. And you're hoping that you will raise a lot of money with it. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell, tell them what you told me when you came in. Last year, your goal was what? It was $25,000. And you went a little bit over that goal last year, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, we went ahead and we raised $33,000. Well, congratulations so, Thank you. Thank what you. is your goal this year? This this year, is we're trying to raise 35000 so okay. we're trying to... So your goal this year is thirty five. Maybe you'll raise forty thousand. That would be awesome. That would <laughs> be right. amazing. Well, I wish you the very best of luck with it. It's an important. Uh, it's an important day. It'll be at Stevens Lake Park, October the fifteenth, mm -hmm. for the Walk to Fight Suicide Out of the Darkness. Right. And and you're asking people to just come at uh, noon, and they can they can register. It's free to register and come and be a part of this event. Okay. Becca, thank you so much for thank coming you. by. Thank you. Okay, Appreciate what you're doing is very important in the community. Oh, thank you. All right. Now I turn to a, an old friend of mine, Dr. C.B. Chastain, and actually we're the same age, so I can say you're an old friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, I'm a couple of days older than you, though, C.B. That's all right. Uh, Dr. C.B. Chastain from the University of Missouri Veterinary Teaching Hospital. But you got a new name now. What is it? What is it? Veterinary Health Center. The Veterinary Health Center. Okay. Uh, expert on, mm -hmm. on pet health. What do we want to deal with today? Well, uh, fall is a time that leaves change and right. rodents try to find their way into homes. And, yes. And, and snakes, uh, too. And snakes, too. Yeah. <laughs> I had a black snake come into the basement. <laughs> They're looking for the rodents. Yeah, they so, are. Yeah. And I, I, that black snake 
it's still in the basement somewhere. I couldn't find it, and I don't know how to get it out. Maybe you can help me. Well, maybe you want to keep him. So. <laughs> but, but so what do we need to be concerned about? Well, how do you control that? How do you stop the rodents, the rodents from coming in? Well, I think you want to make sure that you don't have any little holes or passageways for the, for the rodents to get in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can crawl in between the foundation or... Uh, if you have uh, water lines or power lines coming into the house, which you do, and if it's not sealed up properly, they can come in through there. Right. Am I missing anything? Uh, well, you can use predators like dogs, cats, ferrets. Yeah, to keep snakes. the rodents out? Yeah. Or even a black snake. To. Yeah, or a black <laughs> snake. You can also use traps, uh, but a lot of people use uh, rodent baits of uh -huh. poison. And uh, that can, that's a problem <clears throat> when you have pets because the baits are attractive. They're not, dogs and cats aren't attracted to the traps. Right. Uh, but they are attracted to the baits. Yeah. And so they can consume some of the, the rat poison or, I or mouse never, poison. I would never, ever put uh, rat poison in my house anywhere simply because mm -hmm. of, of the animal. Most, maybe all pet owners wouldn't. And yet a lot of dogs, especially dogs, die from uh, rat and, mo and mouse poison. Really? You know why? Why? Because it moves up the, fu the food chain. So if your neighbors... <sighs> if the neighbor... Or if you put it somewhere on your property and you think that you've completely uh, segregated it from any contact with the dogs and cats, if a mouse or rat eats that, they don't die right away. <clears throat> they... they may even take some of their that bait back to their their nest so then the dog or cat can get the bait at the rat or mouse's nest or by eating the mouse or okay rat. if they if if your cat catches a mouse that has eaten the bait it can poison the cat that's also right. that's right how would you know that how would you know that your cat is suffering from poison you probably if, won't until <clears throat> if it if it survives <laughs> okay and long enough to get to a veterinarian and the veterinarian tells you because okay. the problem with it is if they consume it it takes three to five days before it'll affect the dog or cat all right the point is don't put any poison out in your house if you have pets we're mm, out of time that's right you might want to ask your neighbors not to too to, okay for more information they can check the uh health they can call the Veterinary Health Center, yes. Veterinary Health Center, and that number is? 882-7821. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dr. C.B. Chastain, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks, Paul. Always a pleasure having you here, and we'll see you again real soon. Okay. okay? Uh, tomorrow, Habitat for Humanity and the Jefferson City Art Club will be with us. See you then.